All right, everyone, it is time for yet another tier list. This time we'll be revisiting once again the world of debut albums. The interesting thing of like uh, the debut album tends to be usually either the worst thing the band has ever done or the best thing they've ever done. Sometimes they're just kind of in the middle, but I feel like usually either the worst or the best. But today we'll look at some more debut albums from some of rock and metal's most well-known bands and we'll ask ourselves... Do they hold up? Are they amazing? Are they great? Are they terrible? Or are they somewhere in between? Let's find out. And really quickly, I also wanted to mention my Patreon. If you like what I do on YouTube and everywhere else, joining my Patreon really helps me do this full time and worry less about videos getting demonetized by YouTube or copyright claimed by labels. Patrons get all my podcasts and main channel videos early. There are members only channels in my Discord that I'm super active in. I also do giveaways. For example, I've been giving away a lot of Emos Not Dead merch and you can also have me review your music artwork or anything else all you need to do is join my patreon at the ten dollar level and then every month i do a call for submissions if you want me to review something just drop it in the comments of that post and then i will review it live on twitch so if any of that sounds cool to you hit the link in the description of this video and i appreciate your support the very first one to look at here is from paramore Many people think that Riot is their first album. It is not. Their very first album is All We Know Is Falling from, what is it, 2004, 2005, something like that. Let's check it out. Paramore's your guilty pleasure. Why would they be a guilty pleasure? I actually kind of forgot that this album even existed or that it was their first album because everyone thinks of Riot as being their first album, but it's not. This is the first one. This is before they were signed to a major label. You can kind of hear the, uh, the, the potential here, but I would say, you know, it's not fantastic. I can see why someone would see the potential and want to sign them, but it's a, it's a little bit rough. Yeah. Not, not bad, but not amazing. I would say this is one of the examples of where it's like, it's pretty good. Is generic the wrong word? Well, I don't think it's generic. I think it's definitely better than average. I mean, there was like literally hundreds of bands like this back in 2004 that were in, that were generic. This is like definitely above average, but I would say not amazing, not fantastic. Do they even play any of the songs from this anymore? Her vocal chops are crazy. Yeah, I mean, she sounds great. She's probably what, 17 or something on this, 16? I mean, listen, what were you doing when you were 16? <laughs> I was like playing barely in tune, like shitty Pantera riffs when I was 16. <laughs> Paramore would be nothing without Haley. Well, yeah, absolutely. Which is why I think it's always, there's like this narrative about Paramore that like somehow she screwed the band and like that, you know, she's some sort of industry plant that's like taking advantage of the rest of the band or something like that, which has always been crazy to me because if anything, it's the exact opposite of that. Like they wanted her to be a solo artist and she said, no, I want to be in a band, which is why her Twitter bio forever was Haley from Paramore because she wanted to be in a band. So really, if anything, she carried the rest of the band and took them along with her. So I think that that's uh, an incorrect narrative. Uh, shout out to Haley. So yeah, where does this album belong? Uh, let's see. I think this album's a solid B. That's what I think. Do we feel okay about that? People hate to see a woman win. That is exactly what it is. I think a B is fair, right? It's not amazing, not bad. But, you know, it's one of those sort of one of those debut albums where you're like, OK, I see where they're headed with this. Yeah. F tier. It has a woman. That's right. Man. Anybody else hate women as much as I do? Anybody else just wish women would just disappear so I could just go home and hump my guitar all day, every day? Oh, man, I would just wish women would go away. Anything is better than females. Um, you know, whenever anyone uses the term females, that's the that's the key. It's like, well, you know how females are. Or I was talking to a female the other day and she said such and such. That's how you know. Okay, next. How about a band that had a much better debut, which is Rage Against the Machine, their very first album. From what, 1992, I think? 1992, I believe. A-tier? A-tier? 
I, I feel like an A tier does not do this justice. I've been very critical of Rage Against the Machine many times for uh, lots of reasons. For example, Tom Morello putting the uh, hammer and sickle on his guitar. For those who don't know, let's do a little history lesson really quick, really quick. So back in uh, 1932, Stalin deliberately starved something like two to three million Ukrainians to death because for whatever reason, he didn't like Ukrainians back when they were part of the Soviet Union. Stalin deliberately starved several million U Ukrainians to death. So this is a product of Soviet communism. So when you put a hammer and a sickle on your guitar, it's a little bit weird that you're endorsing things like this, especially because I think Tom Morello, I'm almost certain is the type of person that's like riding hard for Ukraine right now. Like imagine having a hammer and sickle sticker on your guitar while also crusading for Ukraine. It's a little bit weird, right? So I've been very critical uh, of their sort of bizarre. Oh, and another one is um, the song Bomb Track is about this group called Shining Path in Peru, which has been designated as a terrorist group by the United States, by the EU and Peru. Yeah, tankies will always lose their shit about the Holodomor and tell you it wasn't a real genocide. Oh, okay, yeah, they only starved 2 million people to death. Totally not a genocide. But all of that being said, I cannot deny that this album is absolutely God tier. Absolutely God tier. I think this is like one of the best, like, rock or metal albums of all time. It's difficult because as much as I dislike their weird, bad politics, the album is just absolutely God tier. Have I ever seen their first live performance on YouTube? They sound exactly like that. Yes, I have. It's insane. Their first show is crazy. So this is from, um, what, 1991 or something like that. Just at some fucking random community college. They sound insane. From their very first show, they sound fucking incredible. I mean, listen to how fucking good they sounded at their very first show. Insane. So, yeah, I mean, I gotta say, for them being a bunch of, like, edgy, you know, dummies that uh, accidentally endorse murderous leftist groups, uh, I gotta say, the first album is one of the best goddamn albums of all time. It's incredible. Incredible. Untouchable. I think if you put this album to me anywhere other than S tier on purely musical grounds, I think you are on crack. One of the best rhythm sections of all time, Tom Morello, for as much as a fucking clown he is, incredibly brilliant musician. I do not like rap rock very much, but I think Zach just does it flawlessly. 10 out of 10, everything about this album to me is perfect. I think you got to put this on the S tier. I don't think they ever did anything else that was as good as this. I know other people maybe like Evil Empire better. I personally don't. I think this is the better album, personally. Evil Empire is okay, but I think the first album is the best. So that's what I think. I think it goes on the S tier. Let's talk about perhaps the polar opposite of uh, Tom Morello would be uh, Pete Steele and Typo Negative, their first album, Slow, Deep, and Hard. Now, for anybody who's not familiar with uh, Typo Negative, the first Typo Negative album was supposed to be, these are all songs that are written for Pete Steele's old band Carnivore, which, uh, let's just say, not the most woke thing in the world. This would be a good example of a Carnivore song. It's called Race War from uh, the second Carnivore album. A little edgy there. If you think that that sounds like uh, Typo Negative's first album, then you would be right because this whole first album, Slow, Deep, and Hard, was originally uh, Carnivore songs. So that's why it sounds like Carnivore because it basically is Carnivore. Like this. This is just straight up Carnivore. And of course, this song, uh, as you may know, <laughs> is about how much he hates people who abuse the welfare system. So basically the exact opposite of Rage Against the Machine. I think this album is awesome. I do not think it's the best typo negative album, but I do think it is really, really, really good. I think Pete Steele is hilarious. I don't think he was actually like a shitty person. You know, look, he was born in like 1962 in Brooklyn. He's not woke. So I think it's a little bit 
bizarre that people sort of even expect him to be woke that he would be like he'd be like 62 or something now of course he's like a guy in his 60s from brooklyn of course he's not woke but as far as the album itself slow deep and hard I think it's pretty damn good. I don't think it's the best typo negative album, but I think it's pretty damn good. I would give this A tier, I think. I think it's damn good, but I don't think it's as good as Bloody Kisses or October Rust or even as good as uh, Life is Killing Me. So that's what I would think. I would go with A. Let's talk about a couple bands who did not have the strongest first showings, unfortunately. One of those is uh, White Zombie, who I love. I think this band is great. I love White Zombie, but their first album, Soul Crusher, is really, 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 really bad, unfortunately. Basically, unlistenable noise. Like, it sounds like a bunch of high school kids trying to sound like Sonic Youth or something. I mean, this is horrible. The whole album sounds like this. It's like barely music. The entire album sounds like this. Rob Zombie's uh, vocal chops on display. It sounds like it's being recorded from another room. Yes, it sure does. It sounds like a South Park piss take. It does. To be fair, their first three albums, our first two albums are really bad, but I think uh, La Sexorcisto to me is a 10 out of 10 classic, I think is absolutely incredible. And most people think of that as their first album because their early stuff that was independent is like very, very, very hard to find, super obscure. I was like a white zombie mega fan when I was in like ninth grade. So I tried for years to find these albums and I couldn't. And uh, now, <laughs> now I'm grateful that I couldn't find them when I was a kid because it is Absolutely bad, yeah. Sounds like the awkward combination of bands you hear walking through the corridor of a rehearsal studio. Yeah, it sounds like two shitty bands playing at the same time on opposite sides of the hallway in some rehearsal studio, which is like, Jesus Christ, I feel like I feel like I'm being stabbed in the ears. It's not good. Um, it's really, really, really not good, which is too bad because I love their later stuff. But this, uh, I would say, is... Uh Definitely F tier stuff. I'm sorry, White Zombie. I'm sorry, Mr. Zombie. Not good. Another band that uh, did not have the best first showing is uh, Pantera, which again, this stuff was like impossible to find back in the day. I do love the artwork though. This album, Metal Magic, which is from what, 1984 or something, 83, 84, something like that. Um, absolutely impossible to find back in the day. I remember I eventually managed to find a bootleg of it or something like that because I was a huge Pantera fan. I didn't think it was going to be amazing. Yeah, hard to find for a good reason. <laughs> People say that Panteras are posers because they like, you know, deny their past and they won't play the old shit and stuff. Well, all I got to say is if your first album sounded like this, would you play it? Like Ride My Rocket, would you play this if this was your first album? Not good. Better than White Zombie, though. Prototype furry in a chastity belt. Yes. Sounds like a Kiss ripoff. That's totally what it was, yeah. The thing I'm most fascinated by is the cover art. Like, when you were a kid, did you draw swords like this? Because I definitely did. But you think about it, this is like the world's worst sword. Like, what are you supposed to do with this? I feel like if you did, like, chop somebody with it, it would just, that big barb, it would just get stuck on them. And then you wouldn't be able to like pull your sword out of them. What's going on here with this part that has like the little chunk out of it? It just, it looks like a really poorly made sword. But if I drew that when I was like 11 years old, I would have been like, hell yeah, that's a badass fucking sword. <laughs> I just made the coolest fucking sword of all time. And now why don't I draw a jacked fucking orange cat man carrying my my cool ass sword that's what i would do and i'm pretty sure the uh whoever drew the artwork for this album was probably thinking the same thing but uh yeah maybe the ashes of war is greater that's true valid point valid point um that's true it could have a really strong ash of war on it or perhaps you know it scales with one of the attributes now i gotta say it's bad but it's better than white zombie because that white zombie shit is unlistenable metal magic is just bad but it's not just like total shit like white zombie i think so i'm putting it on the c tier bad but at least it sounds like music <laughs> okay we got something we got something good some good stuff here 
how about you guys know my feelings on this one the cleansing by suicide silence or uh as i like to call it the cleaning <laughs> the cleaning by suicide silence uh in my opinion you guys know my theory my feelings on this i've said it a million times i will continue to say it the best deathcore band of all time the best deathcore album of all time no time to bleed is also amazing and great but in my opinion and this is a 10 out of 10 s tier no question about it what i specifically like about it is the album art just kidding the album art's terrible but what i specifically like about this album is that it has a lot more kind of like punk and hardcore sort of vibe to it than a lot of other deathcore did i think a lot of that is because of alex lopez's drumming he's definitely like a hardcore drummer he's not really like a metal drummer and i think that really helped a lot you know mitch's vocal performance is just untouchable still in my opinion sets the standard for deathcore it goes on the S tier, no question about it. Yes, the cleaning by Unalive Silence. That's what it is, S tier. Absolutely no doubt about that. Oh, we got another one that's very, 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 very bad. Do you guys know how bad the first Red Hot Chili Peppers album is? I mean, it's like really, 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 really awful. Oh, sweet thing, you look so sad. Tip up, don't you know? Your daddy's bad. Give daddy a kiss, girl. Give daddy a kiss, girl. You know, the thing is, when a lot of bands would say, give daddy a kiss, girl, they don't mean it literally. They're just like trying to be sexy, like, oh, daddy, like in the sort of you know, sexy porno kind of way. I think in this case, like Anthony Kiedis might literally mean give daddy a kiss because <laughs> he's that type of guy. Daddy was this when Tony girl. was literally kidnapping kids? It might be, it might be. Worse than the artwork, exactly. So if somehow even worse than the artwork. And if you're thinking, oh, well, maybe you just picked uh, the one bad song in the album. No. No, I didn't just pick the one bad song. Whole album's this. Ugh. Hell yeah. Real rock and roll. It's awful. Now, I really like Freaky Styly. Um, I love Uplift Mofo Party Plan. I love Mother's Milk. I think uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic is one of the best albums ever made. This album, let's just say they still had a little bit of uh, work to do. Yes. Sounds like the Rapping for Jesus <laughs> meme song. Yeah. Truly, 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 truly shit tier. I might, maybe, maybe I would rather listen to White Zombie's first album than this. I don't know. Both of them fall into the category of like almost like unlistenable noise to the point where it barely even sounds like music. So hard for me to pick which one is worse, but let's just say both uh, not fantastic. We need lower than F tier. We might. If there's any time in which it was uh, valid, it would be that. Another band that I really love, but uh, I can't say that their debut was the strongest, is uh, no doubt. Back when they were actually a ska band, this is from 1992, many people think of them as Tragic Kingdom being their first album. It's not. This is their first album, their self-titled album from back in 1992. Uh, actually, here's their big song, Trapped in a Box. And this was the single, people. This was the single. She's hitting every note at once and yet none at all. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's bizarre. What even is this? Like, literally, it sounds like two or three different bands playing songs at the same time. But here's the thing. Here's the thing! Here's the thing, people. If Gwen Stefani in 1992, if you met her back then and she was like, oh, I'm in a band, we're called No Doubt, and she played you this song, you would tell her it's the best thing you've ever heard in your life, wouldn't you? I would. I would say, wow, you are so talented and amazing. This is the best music I've ever heard in my life. Would you like to come over to my house and uh, play me the rest of the album? I would love to hear it. <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> Please come over and play me the rest of your album, Gwen. Well, here's what they sounded like in 19... And they got a lot better pretty fast. You know, by 1994, they're pretty good. They got a lot better. Fast, to be fair.
yeah, Gwen Stefani, absolute um, peak of human performance. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to live up to my word here. In the event that Gwen may see this video, I'm going to say this is the best album I've ever heard in my entire life. And I would love it, Gwen, if you would like to come over with your husband, if you would like to come over and uh, play me the rest of the album. Best thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> And last but not least, let's check out the debut album. It's sort of on the verge of whether it's an EP or an album or it's a demo or what. The first album by Sum 41, Half Hour of Power, which is from 1998. A lot of people think of All Killer No Filler as their first album, which it kind of sort of is debatable, but I'm going to say this is their first album and let's check it out. This is the video that made them... That, that got them discovered. Classic video of the guys horsing around at Walmart. Can't go wrong with that. I love videos of the guys horsing around being PG-13, squirting innocent people with water guns. It's right, it was a simpler time. I will never, ever, ever get tired of videos like this. I mean, this was like right around the time that the CKY videos were coming out. I think the first one had been out, I believe. I don't know if they were inspired by that or just coincidence, but you know, just something about this type of video of just guys being dudes horsing around. The only thing missing from this video, did you ever do that thing with your friends when you'd like whack each other in the balls like that? You know, be like, hey, look at that. And your friend would look up and you're like, whack him in the balls. Uh, I miss that. I think we need to bring that back. I don't know if there was like a name for that. Yeah, kind of dressed like Earth Crisis. They were. I don't know if there was a name for that. Um, but uh, hitting your friends in the dick, pretty much always funny. A sack tap. Yeah, I don't know if that's the name for it, but I like it. Give them a little sack tap. I feel like that's the only way this video could have been better. If, it, if there was like a good solid 90 seconds of sack taps, I think uh, would have been appreciated. But uh, all in all, I think uh, it's an underrated album. If you want to consider this their first album, technically it's their demo put out as an EP, but I don't know. A lot of people consider it their first album. So we will do that for the purposes of this. I would say all killer, no filler is S tier. I don't think this is quite as good, but I do think it's pretty damn good. So I'm putting it on the A tier. And that does it for this installment of the debut album tier list. Anybody else just wish women would just disappear so I could just go home and hump my guitar?